everyone, my name is Amanda and I'm the Fun Size Reader and today I want to talk to you about The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So when I first saw this book and bought this book, I looked at the cover and I thought, ooh, this is going to be a fantasy book that I am going to love. I am a big proponent of judging a book by its cover. So I saw this and I thought it was beautiful, and I was like, I have to read this book. Well, of course, in true man fashion, uh, it sat on my shelf for a very long time, and I decided to pick it up the other day because I was like in the mood for fantasy, and I everyone was talking about how good it was, and I was like, I'm gonna read it. So I started it and realized it is not at all a fantasy book. <laughs> so the cover is very deceiving. It's not a fantasy. It is set in modern day, contemporary times, young adult, about a girl in high school. So I was like, hmm, all right, let's see where this goes. So this book is about a girl named Avery and she is kind of this girl who is not really well off. Her mom just died. She lives with her half sister or her half sister's her guardian, but she really lives out of her car. Uh, she plays chess with a homeless man in the park every morning before she goes to school and goes to school essentially and has no friends, no life, no nothing. One day she gets called into the principal's office because uh, they thought she was cheating on an exam because she's very good at uh, statistics and puzzles and things like that. She tries to prove that she's not cheating. They call her in again and she's kind of irritated at this point because she's like, why do you think I'm cheating on this exam? And some guy in a suit is sitting there and this guy tells her that she is needed at the reading of a will for this multi-billionaire in Texas and she has no idea who this man is. She goes to this place in Texas and realizes that she is the essentially sole inheritor of this $46 billion empire. And the man who died, who gave all of this money to her, excluded his family and his four grandsons. She has to live in this house with them and they start to realize that this man liked to play games and solve puzzles. So her and the four grandsons are trying to solve the puzzle of his will to see why he ended up giving the money to her. So this book was so fun. It was so fun. I flew through this. It's a, it's a decent sized book, but it was written so well. It just kept me wanting to read. I really, really liked Avery as a main character. I really liked all the brothers actually, um, because you know, obviously the, the perspective is in Avery's perspective. So we're seeing things through her eyes, uh, but we meet the four grandsons and the rest of the members of the family. And we learn that they are really, really good at puzzles and that that's what they did with their grandfather. So what's really cool about this book is the entire thing is them trying to solve this mystery. And I did not figure it out myself. I really didn't. I was trying and the whole time I was like, why the hell? I was trying to go through all these situations in my head of why he would have left her this money. And everything that I thought of just was not correct. It, it was not right at all. So it was really, really cool that I didn't guess it. There is like a little bit of romance thrown into this book. And it it's one of those, it could be, a love triangle or a love square or whatever, but you don't really know. And it's intriguing. It just, it totally fits with the book. I don't really know who I like the most. I don't really know. If you've read it, I want to know what team you're on. Are you on team Grayson or are you on, I, I know Nash isn't really part of it. Not really. Are you on team Jameson? I don't know. I really don't know which one. Uh, so I really want to read book two, which just came out. Um, so I have to see what happens because I thought that this was going to be a standalone, but you get to the end and you're just like, ah, there's more. So it makes it really exciting to read the second one, uh, which I did just buy because it just came out. Okay. So at this point, 
this is kind of a little bit of a spoiler section, uh, but more so I just like want to talk about some of these characters. I really think there's more shady things going on with these grandsons. Like I, I feel like we can't trust them. So I really do think that there is something shady going on with all four of the grandsons. I mean, obviously I don't trust their mothers. I think they're pretty shady. And I think that they might know more than we think they know. And like Alexander knowing at the end or getting the clues at the end uh, that there's more that he has to do and that he was just kind of like sitting back and letting it all happen and letting it all play out. But that was just to get to his directions, like what more he had to do, which we find out at the end, the son, the true heir is alive. And he's the one that Avery has been playing chess with this whole time. So like something tells me that Tobias knew that. He knew that and there's some reason why he set this whole thing in motion because Avery, in the very beginning of the book, she told the lawyer, Elisa, hey, there's this guy that I play chess with. I want you to take care of him. Like that was, that was said. And she said, consider it done. I'll figure it out. And so then we find out at the end that it really is Tobias. And so part of me is like, who knew? Somebody knows something. And we don't know who, I don't know who, I don't trust Elisa. I think she's, I think she is being a lawyer for her, but she's also, I think, got more skin in the game than just the lawyer. Libby, I'm also really skeptical about. I don't know, something just, I want to be happy with her, but, but I just, something tells me that she is not trustworthy at all. I do think Grayson is really in it for the good. Like he really wants to see the foundation continue and all of that. So I don't really mistrust him. I know him and Jameson were all torn up about the whole Emily situation, which I do think is a little odd. Like I thought that that end of the storyline was not really needed in the book. It was fine, but I didn't. I was more interested in the actual story, not this like side murder mystery thing. I definitely don't trust Thea. Um, I think Thea is setting Avery up for things. Um, and yeah, I definitely, definitely don't trust her. Um, but my biggest thing is the whole like explosion at the end of finding out that Tobias is still alive and none of them know and Xander now needs to go find him but does Elisa know because she kind of knew the family so wouldn't she know what he looks like when she had to identify him to make sure that Avery's request was taken care of I don't know these are all questions that I need answered in book two so I really need to get to reading it because I need to know these things so tell me what you think who do you trust who do you not trust what do you think is going to happen? If you've already read book two, don't spoil it for us, please. We haven't read it yet. Um, but let me know what you think is going to happen in book two. Thanks for joining in and talking about the inheritance games with me today. If you want to chat more, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at The Fun Size Reader. See you next time.